And we're back, guys. Tennis in a minute. I'm your host, Good Energy. We have the semifinals here in uh, at the Qatar Open. Doha, Abu Dhabi up next qualifiers. What do you guys think? Um, who's going to win it? Now, I told you take Iga or Coco on the hedge. Uh, for example, if you put $10 on each person, then you would collect 30. So you still win a good amount of money, right? Um, let's take a look here at my picks last night at the qualifiers for Abu Dhabi. I started to do a video, but we were watching a movie last night and took a nap. I woke up. It's still very early, but I'll get this video out. Bernard pair on the money line. Too much for Laura Sigmund. All right. Easy money there. Underdog. Buell on the money line. Too much for Sasevich. Too much variety. Now, Sass has good variety, but... I said this in the past, if you really follow the channel, players like Sasnovitz, Danielle Collins, these older adult women, they have other things going on right now. They're not really focused on tennis. And we're getting the best of Danielle Collins for one year and she's gone. She's doing too much business stuff, right? She's a businesswoman now. Tennis, once you reach that level where, especially if your intentions isn't to be the best and you're making money outside of tennis, it's time to move on. And I think Daniel Collins is there. Wong over in Dreva, I told you guys, and Dreva is just overvalued. Her, her stock is just inflated. She, she's just not that, okay, she's good, but she's not that good. Wong's a former junior um, slam winner, former top-ranked junior. And a lot of that hype is from Mira. Uh, Eva Liz over Jacqueline. Jacqueline, she's getting better, but her decision-making is just not that great. Eva Liz is going to get balls back. Players that get balls back, they're good shot makers. Eventually, you're going to win these rallies. Uh, I actually had her on the money line, but I took the spread. And I love Parks, but I had to go Arakimova. Parks is she's struggling right now. I normally don't put out picks on my favorite players, but I had to go Arakimova. So that's plus 1,800 odds, right? So um, pretty good, right? Um, now, my personal picks are are always good. You know, it's about good, solid decision making. And, and a lot of the picks I do here now, if, if you have followed the channel for a long time, you know, before I just give you underdog picks, money line picks, good, solid locks. Now we kind of mix it up to keep a good balance, because what happens is when I do 80 or 90 percent, the, the videos, they, they get like one or one or two likes, right? But if I do a pick that loses, I get a lot of people for some reason that come here and they want to talk trash. Like I had one guy that came here the other day and he's like, oh, look at your video. It has two comments. I'm like, listen, guy, first of all, I don't do this for likes or comments. If you if you start a YouTube channel and you want to talk about a conversation, let me see how many comments you get for one. But for two, if you're doing something for likes or comments for, or for attention, you're already off on the wrong foot. You want to do things that you enjoy and things that you can cons consistently produce, right? Because that's that creates a longevity. But overall, you know, a lot of people don't understand the channel does well. The channel does really well. And what people don't understand is I have <laughs> nearly like 6,000 videos every day. My channel is running 5,000 ads. So I'm literally changing the way YouTube pays content creators. People, they don't understand that my channel pumps out a lot of ads. And a lot of people think that it's about views. And we do a good amount of views every day, you know, because of my work ethic. But the reality here is I am changing how content creators get paid. Who cares about views when you're running 5,000 ads a day on your channel? People, they're not understanding that. I am a pioneer. I am changing the game. Understand that because a lot of people don't know how this YouTube stuff works. They don't know how business works, you know, and, and look, I manage a multi-million dollar corporation's assets and a lot of people don't understand how these business structures work, you know, so if, if you feel free, create your, you know, for the haters, create your own YouTube channel and learn the game. But a lot of you people are on the sideline. You don't understand how this stuff works and I'm not going to explain it to you. Okay. But let's start off with a pick here, uh, early morning feedback. But yeah, now I 
have been wanting to do a podcast where I give you my picks because you got to understand just because I I do a video doesn't mean I'm picking that pick. Right. Um, But it's that's going to require a level of commitment. And right now my schedule is just not there. So I keep pushing it back to where I can have enough time to do it consistently, because if I'm giving out my personal picks, it takes a lot of research. That takes a lot of number crunching. There's numerology at play. You know, there's picks that I can give you that I know will win 100 percent of the time. But that doesn't happen a lot. You know, that may happen only once a week. Sometimes it could happen twice a day, you know, so consistency is key. Now, this is a matchup here where Pliskova she just she hasn't done well against Iga Swiatek. She really hasn't. And she's playing well right now. You know, I mean, she's on a nine match win streak. We saw her beat Cross, Osario, Irani, Harriet Dar, Anna Bogdan, Anna Kylinskaya. And Bogdan was a championship in Cluj Napoca. Kylinskaya here, Potapova here, Noskova here. She's she's played 11 sets. She's dropped three of them. She's playing really, really solid tennis. Uh, Osaka, that match, Osaka had it. She was up 5-3 in a tie break. But the thing about Osaka, and I mentioned this previously before, I feel that Pliskova, that matchup with Osaka, now Osaka's not in form. The last three wins Pliskova has had over Osaka, she hasn't been in form. But I feel that that's the type of matchup where Pliskova mentally, she knows if she pushes hard, she can she can beat Osaka because Osaka is that type of player. And we've all played with players like that where, you know, they're they're not giving 100 percent. You know where they're comfortable playing at a 70 percent level. Now, right now, she's not in her best form. We know that. But even in the past, you watch Osaka and like, look, she's given 70 percent, much like a Sloan Stevens, you know. And I would say Sloan and Osaka, they're very comparable mentally. You know, they give what they give and they're okay with that. Osaka does not push 100 percent. Any athlete that watches knows that. And I think Pliskova, she's comfortable playing Osaka because Pliskova is the same way. She does not give 100 percent. But this stretch here, I think she's reaching a peak where she knows she's getting older and she's pushing a lot stronger and harder lately, which is why she's on this amazing run. Uh, but Iga's a bad matchup, guys. Iga's here after taking out Serana Kerste, Alex, and Joe Azarenka. I told you take Iga or Coco to win it, guys. Again, that's that's free money. You know, it's I I do think Iga's gonna win the tournament. Uh this is a matchup here where I think Iga wins, and we're gonna we're gonna go right back with it. We're gonna go with the under 22 and a half. Um, that's three to one. That's the pick there. Two picks, Iga to win and under 22 and a half. Anastasia Pavlyuchenkova taking on Elena Rabakina. Okay, now Anastasia owns a head-to-head. Uh, if you're not familiar with her, she's got a fast ball, ladies and gentlemen, a lot of pace. And what she doesn't have in athletic ability, she makes up with that pace. And people people have to understand that uh, power in tennis, it's, it's a huge advantage because you're putting your opponent on the back foot. You're making up for your footwork and athletic ability by slowing down your opponent with that fastball and, and speeding them up to where they make mistakes. And Nostalgia is here after taking out Dashikina, amazing player. Marta Kashu, these Russian players, we know they don't even want to play. Uh, I'm sorry, these Ukrainian players don't even want to play these Russian players. Uh, Vondrosova, slam champion, good variety. Danielle Collins, fastball. Uh, Rebecca, look, she's winning matches. She's on a seven-match win streak. Uh, we saw her... Um, Take out Collins in Abu Dhabi, uh, Buxa in Abu Dhabi, uh, Sam Sanova in Abu Dhabi, Dasha Kina winning the title, Lin Zhu uh, in the second round after a bye, Emma Navarro and Layla Fernandez. This is a different match for Layla Fernandez, who wants to keep you inside. Anastasia wants the deep ball. She wants the fast ball. They've played once uh, in a, at the French Open, which we know Anastasia, she's really good on clay. That deep run she finally had getting to the uh, title match at the French Open against Barbora. We had Barbora winning that. Uh, that was an easy luck. Uh, we're back in 14 and 2 on a year. Anastasia is 12 and 4 on the year. This is the type of matchup here where um, I, th- I think you, you got to be careful if you like we're back enough. And the reason why I say that is. Anastasia is going to make her work. She really is. She's going to make her work. Uh, I do think Rebecca is going to serve well. Uh, she's going to put up her aces, 
But if she has a sloppy service game, you could see Anastasia break her. And if she, like I say, if she can hold on, she she might win a set. She might win a match here. I think the best value in this pick is to go with Anastasia. Uh, I do. And I would love to see an Iga Rebecca in a matchup. But you got to be careful on this one because Anastasia is going to come to play. And we're going to take Anastasia on a spread. Uh, they're giving her a ton of free games here. And I'm not going to pass up on it. I'm sorry, guys. I'm looking at something here. What is that? I'm sorry. The TV's going on. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to take Anastasia Pavyuchenko. Actually, you know what? Why don't we go, why don't we go with a total here? We're going to take the first set. I'm sorry, I'm watching the, the news. There's something on the news right now. I'm uh, going to take Anastasia plus six and a half on the alternate spread. Uh, I think she'll be able to win games here. So that's the pick there, guys. That's for the price of Elena Rabakina to win it. Um, I think Elena will win it, but uh, it's just a matchup here where Anastasia has got a fastball. She'll be able to she'll be able to put some pressure on Elena Rabakina. So that's the pick here. Anastasia Pavyuchinkova plus six and a half games on the alternate spread. Tennis in a minute. Get your popcorn. We'll be back, guys. An amazing semi-final here will it be Iga Rabakina if so Iga's gonna have to step her game up if she's to win this title and be a three-time champion so those are the picks guys Iga's Fiontech money line under 22 and a half Anastasia Pavyuchinkova plus six and a half that's the pick we'll be right back